Hey guys, today on Rich With Cars, I bring you 2022 Genesis G70 2.0T, real wheel drive. I'm gonna take you guys on a quick review of the exterior, interior, some of the driving impressions and cargo volume of this car. I'll try to compare it a little bit with a recent review that I did on the 2021 Lexus IS 300 and give you guys my opinion on how this compares with some of its competitors. So dive in, let's take a look. In 2022, Genesis decided to fully redesign this G70. They actually didn't change anything on the actual platform of, of the vehicle, but they did a complete redesign of the front end and rear end of the vehicle. They also changed some of the actual lines and uh, vents on the side profile of the vehicle. But all in all, in my opinion, the way that this Genesis G70 looks is absolutely phenomenal. I love the way that this grill looks in the front in the shape of a Superman logo. No, I really, really like the design. Uh, they, of course, uh, maintain the same uh, character lines uh, across all their models like on the headlights. As you probably know, I own a Ge Genesis GV80, which is their first ever SUV. And they started integrating these sort of like double line, uh, uh, I guess, headlights, which basically continues on the side and the rear. In this particular vehicle, the G70, uh, let's walk around a little bit on the side. We do not get those double lines that continue on the side or anything. So the side view uh, blinkers are actually integrated on the mirrors, as you can see. But we do get continuity of the double line lighting on the rear, which we'll take a look at a little bit later on. So the design here on the front is quite striking with the grille and the double line headlights. One thing that I'm not too crazy about is how they integrated the uh, I guess the radar cruise control sensors right here. Um, they try to keep it transparent, but you know, once you know where it is, you can't take your eye off of it. It's always there. I think they could have done a better way of actually integrating that. Uh, the other thing also in the front over here, I like the character lines on the hood. I noticed this also on the GV80, how the character lines on the hood actually wrap around the logo itself, which I really enjoy quite a bit. It really integrates the whole uh, logo into the actual character lines of the vehicle. I don't know how it is on the 3.0T or the sport version, but I know that on this particular uh, trim level, which is a 2.0T, it's basically the entry level uh, Genesis G70. Over here, these are not functional vents, but I'm not sure if on the 3.0T, the larger engine, could be actually opened up for aerodynamics. You do have an opening here on the lower grille, which allows for cooling into the radiator and some of the other uh, portions of the vehicle as well in the uh, engine compartment. Moving on to the side, got some nice character lines, pretty conservative on the side of the vehicle, as you can see over here, one on the top that follows the shoulder line and one towards the bottom over there that basically goes below the actual side vent. Uh, this particular 2022 model, uh, part of the actual changes that they made was the side vent on the previous generation. Before they did the redesign, they had like a larger side vent over here that basically went, I guess, further up. And this particular one, they have just this over here. Pretty nice, but I think they could have done a better job to accentuate the side vent. As I mentioned before, you got the side blinker here that's integrated into the side view mirror. I'm not crazy about the uh, integration of some of the chrome over here on the side view mirror and also around the actual window trim. And talking about the wheels, we have 18 inch wheels. Let's keep in mind that this is an entry level uh, sports sedan. These 18 inch wheels are actually wrapped in uh, 225, 45, 18 tires and that's basically a square setup despite the fact that this car is an, a rear wheel drive vehicle. Moving along, nothing too crazy or special on the door handles. I like the fact that painted in the same color as the body. So in this particular vehicle, 
we have a white color over here uh, and it is a metallic white by the way and then you have the shoulder line that goes all the way to the rear over here uh, you can see a little bit over here how the taillights actually wrap around and you have the double lines design aspect that goes along all Genesis models and then finally you have the shark fin here that's integrated into the roof so as we go from the side to the rear we'll see that the design language of the double lines on the headlights and taillights uh, continues on over here as you can see I really really like that gives it uh, its own distinct character and uh, design language that is not shared uh, with any other uh, brands out there uh, the other thing also that we started noticing on a lot of the luxury manufacturers that is actually repeated here again across all Genesis vehicles is the fact that the Genesis logo is not placed in the rear it's actually Genesis written in laddering so we can see this with Lexus now with the newer vehicles Porsche some other brands as well this is an entry level 2.0 T which has got the uh, four cylinder turbo uh, you'll see that on the entry level you have only a dual exhaust on one side on the 3.0 T you'll have basically oval oval exhaust that basically go on each side of the rear bumper uh, one thing that I don't like about this to be honest is the fact that you have sort of like these fake grills I guess if you want to call it they, I, th I think they could have done something better than that uh, I've noticed this that they've done this also on the GV70 you have the rear view camera over here that is integrated they could have done I think a better job in terms of integrating it instead of just having a circle over there but I do like how they actually integrated the uh, rear trunk release button as you can see over there but yeah I, I like that little touch over there now I'm gonna be moving into the interior given the fact that it's an entry level not too bad um, I actually prefer the interior layout of this G70 versus the IS300 that I reviewed before I would probably say that I prefer the exterior design of the IS300 over the G70 despite the fact that the new redesign on the G70 is really really nice it's a very very close second after the IS in my opinion not as polarizing though as the IS300 I believe that this is uh, leatherette or synthetic leather we got some soft touch plastics over here nice aluminum over here and then we got some nice material buttons here for the windows and the window lock alongside with uh, the controls for the side view mirrors uh, we do not have any aluminum pedals over here once again I did say this is the entry level uh, they cheaped out I think a little bit here on the bottom uh, these are the uh, seat controls but the actual seats themselves are actually not bad and I believe that they're pretty comfortable as well I did uh, drive this for about a day or so and they were pretty comfortable I never took this car on a long trip so I can't tell you in terms of long distance driving but from a comfort perspective for short drives it's it's quite good we got some buttons here for the adjustment of the brightness for the gauge cluster you got the fuel release door and the trunk release as well over there this one does not have an electronic telescoping and tilt we have manual over here so the interior layout of the G70 is quite nice I did say before that I prefer this layout over the IS300 I find that it's much more straightforward and a little bit better organized uh, especially the steering wheel over here it's a nice three spoke steering wheel um, you got a good layout of buttons over here that's for the cruise control that's for your volume and voice control di changing different modes for the radio or the sound and then you got your different menu buttons here for the middle gauge cluster over here I'm not a big fan of this hybrid of uh, gauge cluster you got half analog half digital I don't know why they did that but uh, I would prefer either full digital or full analog you got some nice feel paddle shifters uh, that are steering wheel mounted moving on to the middle you got your engine start stop 
I like the layout of the actual buttons over here. It's a good mix of some um, infotainment screen with physical buttons over here. I like the fact that uh, Genesis decided to stick with some physical buttons. Keeps it very simple. You got your HVAC controls over here with your heated seats that are standard and your different directions for your HVAC and your AC button over here. And then you got your front and rear uh, defrosters and some additional uh, HVAC controls over here. These are all your shortcut buttons. As you can see, map, navigation, radio, media. Uh, once again, that's your favorite programmable button and setup. Screen is very nice, uh, legible. It's also touch and very similar to the one that I have on the GV80. A little bit smaller though. A little storage compartment. It does not have wireless charging, at least on this trim level. And I like this electronic gear selector. As you can Cup see. holders over here, your drive modes, uh, your auto hold, your camera. Camera is only for the rear. Uh, once again, being a entry level trim. So you only have rear view camera, but let's just take a look. Very good quality graphics over here. In my opinion, it's way better than the one that came with the IS300. I like the fact that you also have a uh, split view with a map or the GPS. You got some additional storage over here with uh, USB-A and that's basically it. You have your glove compartment, pretty simple and straightforward. And this is a soft sort of plastic with some stitching on it and some, uh, I believe that's plastic to uh, emulate aluminum, but still pretty nice. And that's it. You got your speaker grills for the tweeters over there. And then you got your larger speakers on the bottom. You got uh, different buttons here for Homelink, SOS and Genesis Connected Services. So the G70 actually comes standard with a lot of safety features, which I will list shortly. But uh, considering the fact that it's a entry level luxury sports sedan, it does have a whole bunch of different uh, safety features. And in fact, it has an IIHS uh, top safety pick. So let's take a look at some of the actual safety features uh, included a standard around the G70 entry level. A quick look at the rear seat room. Uh, the front seat is adjusted to my height. I'm 6'1", so not much space here in the rear, but I would say that the level of finish and quality is still pretty nice. I like the fact that you have some rear vents over here. No controls for the rear vents, but still pretty good. And then you have a, a USB-A outlet over here, which is good. Some nets here as well which is pretty practical. You got a uh, armrest here in the middle with a couple of cup holders. No pass-through though. And you got some reading lights here in the middle. Take a look at uh, the room that I have for my knees. Like I said, I'm 6'1". And the seat in the front over here is adjusted to my height. So I do have very, very little space. I'm sitting upright. And in terms of headroom, my hair is definitely touching. My skull is probably about a centimeter off. Let's take a quick look at the cargo space. You have about 10.5 cubic feet of cargo volume over here. Enough for a large suitcase and maybe some carry-on. I like the fact that the opening over here is actually quite large. So this G70 entry level comes with a two liter inline four turbocharged and it basically comes with 252 horsepower and 260 pounds per foot of torque. It's actually pretty peppy, not bad uh, for an entry level sports sedan. You can see here that we have some additional uh, bracing for better stability. I'll show you guys some of the fuel economy numbers. So my driving impressions on the G70 um, were actually pretty surprising. Uh, I found the, the G70 is actually quite uh, pleasing to drive. Uh, it ended up being a little bit stiffer and more responsive, in my opinion, than the IS300. I find that the actual uh, different drive modes, once you actually change them from, let's say, Eco, Comfort, Sport or Sport Plus, you end up actually feeling the differences way more between one 
one drive mode or another. Uh, specifically, I ended up finding out that the uh, the steering ends up being stiffer, and it's you actually get to feel it uh, alongside with uh, with the actual responsiveness on the gas as well. Like I said before, compared to an IS300, I find that this G70 is a little bit more responsive. And you know, if you're looking for a sportier vehicle, I would say that this is a better option as an entry level than an IS300. If you're looking for uh, you know better feel on the drive or better or better responsiveness on a drive compared to some of the German rivals I would say that because uh, I've driven the new 3 series I have not driven the C-Class nor the A4 you know if I were to compare it between the G70 uh, BMW 3 series and the IS300 and we're talking about all the entry-level trims uh, probably would rank it as uh, BMW, Genesis and Lexus in terms of drivability. I am a Lexus guy but unfortunately I have to I have to be honest as well. Well guys I hope you enjoyed this quick review of the 2022 redesigned uh, 2.0T four-cylinder inline four uh, Genesis G70. I really enjoyed this vehicle as an entry-level I think it looks great. Not as good as an IS, but they did a phenomenal job. Genesis is doing some really, really good stuff with their newer vehicles. And I really, really think that they're gonna be coming out with uh, with more great products like they just did with the GV70 and their upcoming uh, GV60, which is gonna be fully electric. So if you guys want to uh, leave any comments below, I'm curious to know what you guys think of this new 2022 G70 and uh, don't forget to like subscribe and stay tuned for the next one take care guys